This video breaks down why the LA Clippers are different in 2021. Paul George is making up for his infamous collapse last year, while the two-time finals MVP Kawhi Leonard looks more like the Raptor version of himself rather than the player who scored zero points in the fourth quarter of Game 7 last year. You're about to see a breakdown of that, and stay tuned to find out every reason for why the Clippers shouldn't be slept on. Only 20% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, pressing that sub box would show a great amount of support for this content. Either way, thanks the world for tuning in. Comments or shout out to John, who says he's unsure if the Warriors will make the playoffs, but with Curry healthy, we'll see what they're about. Thanks for the great take, John. Next video shout out question is coming up. You may be surprised about the belief I'm showing in the Clippers because when it comes to second team all LA, most people are feeling like this. Charles Barkley really said the Clippers weren't contenders. Well, let me tell you something, Manuel. I've been poor, I've been rich, I've been fat, I've been skinny, I've been old, I've been in the Hall of Fame, and one thing I can always tell you, the Clippers have always sucked. <laughs> I can't blame Charles for having that take because the majority of fans and media have rightfully stopped taking the Clippers seriously after their choke job in the second round last year. At first I felt the same way as Chuck because the West is absolutely stacked this year and the Clippers just seem cursed. And before breaking down for you why Kawhi and PG are different this year, we quickly have to take a trip down memory lane to a dark time for Clipper fans. In a closeout game five with merely 14 minutes left up 3-1 in the series, second team all LA had a 14 point lead with one minute left in the third quarter. They'd give up that game five lead in a split second, falter an 18 point second half lead in game six, and then in game seven, Kawhi Leonard scored zero points in the fourth quarter, and Paul George clanked a corner three point shot off the side of the backboard. And that infamous shot was something PG would get absolutely roasted for, Clippers fans burned his jersey, and seemingly every player was tweeting about LA's monumental choke job. The nickname Pandemic P rose from the ashes of the apparent death of his production, and because of all that hate, according to ESPN, Paul George says his opponents are chirping him more this season. But despite going through hell in the bubble, here's why I think PG will come out of it strong and bounce back in a big time way in these upcoming playoffs. Since Paul announced he was back with his old trainer right before the season started, he looks like a completely different player. The trainer George has returned to is who he was working with in 2018-19 with OKC, a year where he was first team all defense, first team all NBA, while being a top MVP candidate. And the improvement in this year's regular season has been evident as George's true shooting percentage is at a career high 61.5%. Also, compared to his first campaign in LA, his stats have significantly elevated across the board. It's one thing that Paul's shooting mechanics and ball handling look far more polished, but it's the motivation factor that's going to make the seven-time All-Star, I believe, a different animal in these playoffs. We sometimes get lost in the advanced stats and don't take into account the mental aspect of basketball because while George's teammate, the fun guy Kawhi Leonard, rarely shows emotion, conversely, Paul George, ever since his days throwing down posters as an up-and-coming kid with the Pacers, has always let his emotions do the talking. That may have cost him when it mattered most in 2020, but don't forget who we're talking about here. Paul George has dealt with a ton of adversity throughout his career. He's bounced back to all-star form after suffering one of the most gruesome injuries in league history. And early in his career, he wasn't some instant superstar in this league. He averaged under eight points in 20.7 minutes per game as a rookie. But after being thought of as simply just some young role player, he worked his way up through the Pacers system and became one of the most likable up-and-coming young stars the game had to offer, winning the MIP in 2013 and leading the Pacers to the conference finals that year. I know he demanded a trade out of Indianapolis, he wasn't the best teammate in OKC and failed to show up in the playoffs for the last few years, but Paul has a history of proving people wrong, and he's currently locked in on being that legit number two option next to Kawhi. In the last five games, he's averaging 27 points on over 50% shooting from both the field and from distance. More on PG coming up, but the Clippers have now stole the fun guy Kawhi Leonard and Mafuzi chef Serge Ibaka from the Toronto Raptors. Before he went down with a back injury, Serge was more than making up for the free agency loss of Montrez Harrell, as LA has heavily benefited from the three-point shooting presence and rim protection of Ibaka. 
LA was all the way down as the number 13 ranked squad in points allowed last season, but with Serge roaming the paint and moving pretty damn well on the perimeter for a player who has a 7 foot 3 wingspan and is 240 pounds of pure muscle, they've become a much more versatile defensive team and they've become more versatile on both ends actually, but as we've seen with how far the Raptors have fell in the standings this year, it's safe to say fans in the 6 are desperately missing the value of Serge, because not only does he keep everyone in check with their defensive rotations on the floor, but he's an underratedly valuable guy to have around in the locker room. Serge reuniting with his old pal Kawhi could help bring back the claw that we witnessed when he delivered the first championship of all time to a team outside of the US. It's easy to forget, but just two years ago in the 2019 playoffs, Kawhi cemented himself as an NBA legend, hitting miraculous once-in-a-lifetime game-winning jumpers. What he did for the previously hailed Lebronto Raptors was generationally great, and now he has a chance to do the same for the currently cursed LA Clippers. The trade of Lou Williams in exchange for the all-time great passer and two-time NBA champion Rajon Rondo was an excellent one for Lawrence Frank in the Clipper front office. Williams was a defensive liability and a bit of a ball stopper to be honest, and since LA acquired Rajon, they're undefeated up to this point. What Rajon did against the second-seeded Phoenix Suns was special as, in only 19 minutes, he dropped 15 points including three three-pointers, nine dimes, and a steal. Playoff Rondo didn't get enough credit whatsoever for his contributions to the Lakers championship run last year, so now having him quarterbacking next to a top three player in the world in Kawhi Leonard is scary for other West contenders. Next, we'll look at if the Clippers are title favorites, but first, I can't forget a crucial element to why LA is different this year, the chemistry of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, not just offensively. But PG and Kawhi are two of the best wing defenders of all time, as their combination of lockdown ability relates to Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in their primes. On this end, the chemistry this duo's developed has allowed them to switch, rotate, and deny their opponents at a different level than they did last year. As the great Ray Lewis once said, defense wins championships, and LA's two elite stoppers on the wing are the driving force behind a Clippers defense that seems tailor-made to shut down any opposing star. In terms of the team's overall chemistry on both ends, losing a non-floor spacer in Montrez Harrell and a ball-dominant combo guard in Lou Will, that's going to open up the floor for the elite shot creating of Kawhi and PG, and every player revolving around the Clippers' one-two punch. One of those players is Marcus Morris Sr., who's taking just over four threes per game and knocking down a stunning 46% of them. Like his brother, Morris is an excellent stretch big who can hit timely shots whenever you need them. Journeyman backup point guard Reggie Jackson once had a season where he averaged 19 points per game for a playoff team. He's underrated and has been very efficient this year. There's the former Pistons floor spacer and Luke Kennard and the veteran playmaking wing Nick Batum, who've both chipped in with solid scoring outputs. Those four players I just mentioned in Morris, Jackson, Kennard, and Batum combined to average 38.6 points per game. And considering I haven't brought up their solid young center, Ibiza Zubac, and the pesky heart of their team in Patrick Beverly, who just got hurt, the Clippers' supporting cast is very underrated. They're a big reason for why, even with Serge Ibaka out for the last month, the team's been able to go 14-4 without the backbone of their defense. But the question you stuck around for, will 2021 be championship number one for the typically underachieving Clippers? This past decade was nothing but expectations leading to injuries and then second round exits. As I mentioned, Beverly's going to be out for three to four weeks, but it's not like he'll miss the playoffs, and if anything, this is going to allow George and Leonard to take on more of a playmaking role, which could ultimately be good for the team's continuity. But to answer the question, the reason why this could very well be the year for the Clippers, like it could be for a lot of teams in a wide open race for who's the title favorite right now, is the fact that along with PG, most importantly, a top two to three player in Kawhi has a chip on his shoulder, and the claw has proven he can put the team on his back when he's locked in and carry a team all the way to the championship. But maybe Kawhi got complacent after winning that title, and in the previous season, that may have cost him. This year, however, he'll be out to claim the status he thought he once had, that title being the greatest player on planet Earth. 
Due to that, I think Kawhi Leonard will be back to the San Antonio Spurs Toronto Raptor version of himself and lead the Clippers at the very least into the conference finals. My title favorite is still undecided though, so hit notifications on this channel, of course subscribe as well, to see if that changes over time. The question for next video shout out is, do you take the Clippers seriously? For channel updates and highlights, you can follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops, and I'll see you next video.